We know there's a big story when we get several tweets, messages, and emails about one topic in rapid succession. And that topic is the new Intel and potentially AMD and ARM security vulnerability that's been discussed on the internet. This would be pertaining to Spectre and Meltdown, two new attacks that can be used to gain access to information on your computer. These topics enter areas where I am personally not an expert. I am not knowledgeable enough on them to provide an opinionated response. And a lot of you wanted that when tweeting at us. Uh, so what we did instead is some research. We looked around a lot, dug up all the information we could on these topics, and we put together a piece that should hopefully give you information on what this vulnerability is from a non-opinionated standpoint, just strict facts about everything, and how it impacts you, what the next steps are for the companies involved, and the discussion on performance. So the point here is to look at this completely factually and journalistically and avoid opinions because again, it's not really what we do, but uh, we can do research and we do know technology a bit. So hopefully this helps you out with understanding what all of this is. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB closed loop liquid cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus three 120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake rain fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. The shortest version of the issue is this. Linux and Windows operating systems are undergoing major reworks to cope with security vulnerabilities that are present on the last 10 years worth of Intel CPUs with Spectre exploits discovered on AMD, ARM, and Intel CPUs alike. Everyone is affected in at least some capacity, but the exploits affecting each vendor vary. The hardware itself isn't insecure or physically compromised, but it requires software changes to close security holes that are present. The concern from the community has been how these security holes will change the performance, because as we close, those initial reports from GR Security indicated between 5% and 29% performance deficit, and note that the commonly cited 29% number was derived from a 6700 test bench with page table isolation, one of the proposed hardening techniques for increasing security. This was found with RAP or RAP Linux benchmarks, and the number is not a blanket number for all performance changes, but we'll get to that momentarily. What is the vulnerability though? Project Zero, a Google team, reported that there is a system call issue with the kernel, which could lead to security vulnerabilities when a virtual memory allocation is read. Project Zero reported this issue to not only Intel, but also AMD and ARM back in June of 2017. There are two separate attacks that have been developed around this security vulnerability, and they are codenamed Meltdown and Spectre. Meltdown is a breakout attack. This means it's capable of exiting the confines of virtual environments, and Spectre is a speculation execution attack. Meltdown is the worst of the two attacks, and is known presently to affect Intel with indeterminate effect on AMD and ARM. The team is still researching, and Spectre does affect Intel, AMD, and ARM alike, but we'll see about Meltdown. Both attacks are capable of intercepting user data that is currently being read, particularly when involving virtual memory allocation. These attacks give access to data stored in memory, which could include passwords, usernames, and other transactions that are being actively moved between memory and the CPU. This is particularly concerning from an enterprise or server standpoint, as one of the attacks leverages branch prediction exploits to, as a KVM guest, read the memory of the host kernel. This has severe implications for virtual machine users, primarily those who may slice servers into multiple virtualized environments for customer use. Meltdown, for example, is capable of granting an attacker full access or control over the contents of physical memory on the machine, and that breaks the boundaries of virtual machines. Project Zero notes that the Meltdown, quote, breaks the mechanism that keeps applications from accessing arbitrary system memory, and that, quote, Spectre tricks other applications into accessing arbitrary memory locations in their memory, stating further that both attacks use side channel attacks to obtain information from the accessed memory location. The researchers behind Meltdown and Spectre have published papers on these exploits and have also published an FAQ for consumers. The very first question, am I affected by the bug? The answer is equally simple, most certainly yes. 
The researchers note that the Meltdown exploit has worked on Intel CPUs dating back to 2011, and they've also noted that they are not yet clear on whether Meltdown explicitly works on ARM or AMD processors. When we asked Intel for a statement, we were sent this page where the company alleges that these exploits may also affect AMD and ARM. We've asked AMD for a statement countering this, but we are currently in a holding pattern. AMD did, however, publish its own short note about these exploits. As of now, AMD is mostly noting that they're aware of the vulnerabilities and that the company is investigating further. Critically, AMD notes that they do not think these exploits have been used in the public domain, though the Meltdown researchers state that they are uncertain whether Meltdown or Meltdown-like attacks have been deployed publicly. So we're not fully sure yet. As for the Spectre attack, the team notes that this exploit has been verified on Intel, AMD, and ARM processors, and notes that it will work against nearly every type of computer, including smartphones and cloud servers. Google, by the way, has confirmed that Android is affected and has issued a security advisory about the attack. Intel issued a statement, finally, and AMD issued its own short news item. Neither of the latter have had much information, while Google has published some of the most detail on the subject. If you're interested in further reading, check out what Project Zero wrote. So then, why did this happen at all? To begin with, the Meltdown white paper indicates a root cause being branch prediction on the CPUs, particularly speculative branch prediction, the foundation for Spectre's name. Speculative prediction is something we have talked about before, primarily with GPU architectures, Branch prediction is the goal of the CPU or GPU to execute commands before those commands are ever issued. The idea is to reduce wait time. Maybe the command never comes, and so the work is wasted. But the potential upside is worth it, as the pipeline is sped up and tasks can execute with lower latency. And in this instance of the attack, some data can get left behind in L1 cache, which should be protected data, but the exploit is able to gain access to that orphaned information, giving attackers access to potentially sensitive data, like passwords or usernames. Spectre is interesting. This one is able to attack user space in virtual machines. The white paper details an example where JavaScript code running inside of a Google Chrome browser could be leveraged to read data sent through Chrome, like reading a field from inputs on websites. This attack can be deployed through JavaScript downloads, and as we understand it, this could mean that an ad network compromise, for example, could have disastrous effect. This has already been tested as successful, by the way, on the Chrome browser, and could theoretically work on other browsers. So it's not just hypothetical, this works as an attack. This issue doesn't come down to just sacrificing security for sake of speed either. Kernel level security would indicate that memory should be protected by other models, like address space layout randomization. GN Patreon backer Steve Strezzo was able to provide a great example of this, and quoting Steve, with address space layout randomization, or ASLR, it's basically relinking a program at random locations at launch time. You can't just say, give me the memory at zero by D-E-A-D-B-E-E-F, because I know that the user's password is there, as well as kernel ASLR, or KASLR, which does the same thing but for kernel memory. Since the kernel's memory isn't protected anymore, it can be read at will by the attacker. It's not a speed versus security thing. The security was supposed to happen elsewhere. What happens next? Expect a large dump of information on January 9th. This is when the embargo lifts on everything that's been kept behind doors so far. This will be the next major milestone for us, and will be a point at which the general consumer and in our community, we should be able to obtain a better understanding of what's going on and if it changes the way PCs perform. The most immediate steps are being taken by the hardware and software manufacturers with Microsoft fast-tracking updates to Windows for security. This is a software-level solution as the hardware itself is not physically compromised. If you own affected CPUs, and you do, even if Spectre is affecting AMD, you can expect software level patches to help resolve some of these concerns. ARM has already developed software solutions that can mitigate the effect of Spectre specifically. Linux kernel virtual memory systems are already being overhauled and Microsoft is working toward a January 9th patch and has already issued improvements to the fast track or fast rain users. 
The question is whether or not any of these fixes will impact performance negatively. That's the big concern. So then, performance claims. Early claims by GR Security have gone through a game of telephone at this point. Initial reports showed potential for 5% to 30% performance deficit in some specific tasks, with different tasks suffering in different ways. The performance loss comes by the way of introducing more latency, done by nature of adding more layers of security. What this does not mean, however, is that every CPU in every application will instantly be 30% slower. Most of the major performance slowdowns have been reported with enterprise level software, not necessarily consumer level software. Foronix, for instance, has already published some preliminary gaming benchmarks on Linux, and they have shown a performance deficit that is largely within margin of error. This is only one operating system, of course, with only a few games, so there's room for other games, OSs, or CPUs to be impacted in greater ways, but for now, it doesn't look too bad for gaming. What we're most curious about, though, is the impact to workstation and production type applications. These straddle the line between consumer and enterprise uses, and we're unclear of the performance losses and whether they can be mitigated with more time. For example, if these panicked fixes were just thrown together quickly, there may be better solutions later. This isn't to downplay the significance of the exploit, nor the significance of lost performance, but to restore some sanity to the discussion. When citing numbers, for example, 30% performance loss, it's important to know where they come from, and if they impact the implications you're talking about in that context. We're waiting on further performance testing at this point, and we'll have to see how that goes with CES going on as well. Because right now, we've got CES to worry about, as does everyone else, and the patch publicly will launch on January 9th, which is when CES is basically starting. So that's a nice gift from Microsoft and everyone else in the community. We will be talking with vendors at CES about this performance concern or the security concerns in general, and we'll just have to update from there. Until that time though, we're gonna do our best to stay on top of the story. You can get faster in updates to Windows and do some preliminary testing. We might, but it's just a question of if we have time before the flight, and we probably don't, but we'll try. And in the meantime, don't be too concerned because there's not a lot you can do anyway, and uh, just see what happens with the patch. If you do want to use the fastering update though, of course, be aware that there are some stability concerns with any early deployment of a patch or OS, and it's just a matter of how much you think or how likely you think you are to be affected by this bug. Intel statements thus far have left a lot to be desired. They are not responding in a way that, uh, that really reveals information that could be useful in determining what specifically uh, they plan to do in the future to resolve this. Intel did a, a big statement saying they're gonna be more aggressive in the future. So this would be a good time, Intel, to show us what you mean by that. AMD has issued a brief, it's not really a statement, but just, uh, just a brief, really short quote that they are aware of the vulnerabilities uh, and they're researching them. We've been in contact with both companies. We did not receive more from Intel than the statement they've already publicly posted. AMD is, they basically have us in a holding pattern and we'll update everyone via the website, gamersnexus.net, which we'll link below if they do provide more information for us. But that's all for now. Hopefully this type of video worked out for you because as stated, it's not really our core expertise. So it came down to researching and compiling everything to just provide a, a facts only overview of it. And hopefully we did an okay job of that for you. Quick thanks to Steve Streza from the GN Patreon community who also runs a YouTube channel, Strezabyte. Steve Streza is a developer and knows a decent amount about this stuff, though he did want me to note that he's not a security expert, but he did help provide a lot of the backing information for this topic. So subscribe for more as always. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. I'll see you all next time.